Welcome back to A320 Knowledge, your trusted source for Airbus expertise. Today, we'll be diving into Airbus's guidance on using the auto thrust. Hi, and welcome to this short briefing on auto thrust. Most of you should agree that the normal use of the auto thrust is second nature to you by now. Yet if your crew find themselves in a situation of thrust lock, toga lock, or alpha floor, the reaction may not be as automatic. So the aim here is to just quickly revise the use of the auto thrust to make these situations more instinctive. So starting out with the normal operation of the auto thrust, you agree that it is either disconnected, armed, or active. Between the idle and the climb detent, the auto thrust is active. In case of engine out, it is active between idle and flex MCT. Beyond this position, you have manual control on the thrust. That is to say, if you move the thrust levers beyond the climb position, the engines will rapidly deliver the requested thrust. Yet the auto thrust will remain armed and be ready to activate when you reduce the levers back to the climb detent. Now once the auto thrust is engaged, the crew has the responsibility to regularly monitor the auto thrust performance. If it fails to maintain the speed at the selected value, you should disconnect the auto thrust and take over. To disconnect the auto thrust, you must press one of the red indistinctive disconnect push buttons on the side of the thrust levers. Yet remember, when the auto thrust is engaged, the auto thrust is at the climb detent. If the indistinctive disconnect push button is immediately pressed, the thrust will directly increase to climb thrust, giving you an unexpected thrust increase. To avoid this, you should move the levers to position the blue thrust lever position symbol in front of the current thrust needle. Then once set, press the indistinctive disconnect push button to disconnect the auto thrust. Press the push button again to remove the auto thrust off memo. To re-engage the auto thrust, simply press the auto thrust push button and move the auto thrust levers to the climb detent as requested by the FMA. Now if the auto thrust system fails or if the auto thrust push button on the FCU is pressed by error, the auto thrust will also disconnect. If this happens, the engine thrust will freeze at the current thrust value and thrust lock will be displayed on the FMA and on the ECAM. This is a safety net that aims at maintaining continuous thrust while awaiting a pilot input to manage the situation. If the message is displayed because the auto thrust push button was mistakenly pressed, to unlock the thrust lock, you simply re-engage the auto thrust by pressing the push button. Or, as marked on the ECAM, and especially in the event of an auto thrust failure, the thrust levers must be moved. This action regains manual control on the engine thrust. An important point to not forget is that as soon as you move the thrust levers, the engine thrust unlocks and targets the current thrust lever's position. Another safety net example of the auto thrust is the Alpha Floor Auto Thrust Protection Mode. To avoid the scenario of flying at low speed with a low thrust, the alpha floor protection of the auto thrust will activate when the angle of attack exceeds the alpha floor threshold. If the angle of attack reaches alpha floor, the aircraft will automatically activate the auto thrust and directly set toga thrust. This will happen regardless of the current thrust lever position. Let's take a look at a practical example. So here in this scenario, the alpha floor auto thrust protection mode has been triggered. You can see toga thrust is now immediately being targeted and all engines are now set to the maximum thrust available. Alpha floor is now no longer displayed on the FMA because we have exited the situation. Yet the FMA now displays toga lock with a flashing amber box. 
Toga lock is a reminder to the crew that the aircraft thrust is locked in toga thrust. So to unlock toga thrust, the pilot must simply disconnect the auto thrust. When required, you can of course re-engage the auto thrust. Now depending on your aircraft standard, toga lock will not appear. What will happen is that once the aircraft has exited alpha conditions, the auto thrust will return to the initial thrust setting mode you had before alpha floor engagement, without any crew input required. To better visualize that, let's play out the same scenario on the A350. Here we are in manual thrust and alpha floor has been triggered. The auto thrust is automatically activated and toga thrust is immediately applied. Now as we are safely out of the situation, you can see that alpha floor is no longer displayed on the FMA. All thrust has also automatically disengaged and returned back to the initial auto thrust status, which if you remember was manual thrust. The added value you can see with the latest standards is that the thrust is fully automatically managed in this situation. This essentially reduces your crew's workload. This short briefing has quickly revised how the auto thrust is used in normal mode and how it is also used in some abnormal situations. As your role as an instructor, it is important to emphasize to your flight crew that they must first fully understand the situation in order to apply the correct actions in the right order. For more in-depth knowledge on the use of autothrust, I do encourage you to check out the dedicated FCOM and FCTM sections. I trust you have found this briefing interesting, and I will see you around for the next one. Thanks for tuning into this tutorial on using the autothrust.